Hi everyone, in this video what we're going to talk about is how to go about the business and practice of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices. Now, what we have to remember is that the activities, the quizzes, uh, the structure of the entire course, all of this is built around uh, you as students building up an understanding of linear algebra, of vector spaces, of matrices, of linear transformations um, in a way that connects logically and builds your understanding of these materials so that when you go out and use these things in practice, wherever one goes about using them, you understand what these things mean. And when you compute a value, you understand what that value is really telling you. That being said, if you take a look at this, this is the matrix for which we recently, uh, in the last video, computed the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue lambda equals 2, which is great. But, um, and we did so by connecting it to uh, systems of homogeneous equations or um, kernels of transformations, however you want to interpret that to null spaces, which, which is great. It shows the interconnectedness of the subjects we've studied. But a downside to this is that, um, you know, we were given that lambda was two uh, when we went ahead and solved this problem. Now, if I were to just go to a, a random linear algebra student on the street somewhere and hand him this matrix and say, all right, go ahead and find um, its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, that's a much different problem, right? Because we did solve our eigenvalues. We did so um, under G3. But when we did so, we did so with two by two matrices. And so the resulting characteristic uh, polynomial, well, that's just going to be a quadratic, relatively straightforward factoring process. Uh, here, with a four by four matrix, you're going to have a fourth degree polynomial as your quadratic, uh, as your characteristic polynomial which is much harder to factor. And more than that, uh, even the process of finding a uh, characteristic polynomial for this matrix is going to be a horrendous process. You can imagine taking 2 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, minus 2 minus lambda, and then taking the determinant of this whole thing by hand, and then finding the, uh, the polynomial that way, it's very, very difficult. So what we're going to do instead is, uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show how you can use something like Sage to get all of the eigenvalues and characteristic polynomials uh, all at once. Sorry, not characteristic polynomials, the eigenspace all at once. And so we're going to use this command called eigenvectors right. What eigenvectors right it does is it takes the matrix, it finds the eigen uh, the vectors you would take by multiplying uh, this matrix on the right by these vectors, find the eigenvalues associated with that, and a basis for the eigenspace associated with each eigenvalue. So if we run that. What we end up with is uh, an eigenvalue of 2, whose basis is this, and a dimension of the space is 2. An eigenvalue uh, of this probably irrational number, because it's the solution to a fourth degree polynomial. It's probably very irrational uh, basis vector, and it has dimension 1 and the positive or the negative of the other uh, eigenvalue, its basis, dimension one. And so you see we found the eigenvalues uh, and factors at once. Now, something you may notice looking at this is that the two eigenvalues 
eigenvectors that we found associated with two here are not exactly identical to the ones that we found before. So there are one zero minus three, one, and zero one, three, minus one, right? Those are the two basis sectors that this algorithm found. And if we compare that to what we found when we did this by, uh, not by hand, but you know, more directly, I suppose, um, there's not exactly, well, there is a match here, right? These two are actually identical, but this vector and this, uh, this vector and this vector are not equal to each other. Well, we've already seen before from various problems that you could have different basis for the same space, and in particular for the same subspace, of which these two ostensibly are both a basis of. And something that uh, one could observe is that, first of all, it's fairly clear that these two vectors down here span a two-dimensional subspace of R4, and therefore at least have the same dimension as that span. Moreover, part of that is the fact that these two are linearly independent, right? And these two are linearly independent. So we're definitely talking about the basis of two two-dimensional subspaces. And then what one might notice is that if I take the sum of these two vectors, then one, one, zero, zero, is in that span. So the span of this space is definitely a subset of the span of the space found below. And they're both the same dimension, which means actually they must be equal to each other, right? Those must be the same space. So um, the the algorithm back end that Sage uses to find the eigen uh, space is not identical to what we did before, and therefore will give you uh, a potentially different basis. And it's possible that in some cases it'll give you the exact same basis, and on uh, some cases maybe it will give you no basis factors being shared with what we found in our other method. But that's all okay. A basis isn't unique. And so we don't worry about that too much. It just finds a basis. So, uh, so when one goes out in practice and needs to analyze matrices or linear transformations, and you use something like Sage or Mathematica or whatever to find eigen uh, space values and eigenspaces, just know that. Um, different algorithms could give you different spaces or different bases, but they are all legitimate bases. All right, thank you very much.